Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. The Monsters, a new movie hitting Netflix right now, written and directed by none other than Rob Zombie. This is the first Rob Zombie film to step out of the horror genre, but not too far out of the horror genre. This is a comedy family movie. Uh, with horror elements to it. Of course, The Monsters, a TV show from the 80s, 70s? I don't know exactly when the show took place. A show that I loved watching growing up. Uh, it's one of those shows where it would have reruns of The Monsters along with like Dennis the Menace and Gilligan's Island and things. Those days where you'd stay home sick from school and you only had a few channels on the TV and reruns of The Monsters would play. Uh, I was, you know, I recently, probably about a year ago, I rewatched all of Rob Zombie's films uh, to rank them. Uh, so if you want to see that, go ahead and search top five Rob Zombie films, Ray Taylor show. And uh, he has a very similar aesthetic, similar vibe to all of his movies. Very dark, very weathered. Like his characters are all very weathered, kind of very scary. Very. He always tries to make you sympathize with some of the most disgusting characters you could imagine. Uh, whether it's from his House of a Thousand Corpse movies, which there's like a trilogy of those films, or even the remake of Halloween where he tries to make Michael Myers a sympathetic character. Uh, sometimes he's able to do it, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, some of his movies are definitely better than others. Uh, it definitely feels like a horror director that I would love to see him do a Western. He's, the aesthetic of his is very Western-like, very weathered, uh, sun-weathered, beaten down, dirty, dusty. Uh, and uh, I think even, even the characters, even the actors themselves look like they've been uh, weathered by the sun. And... Uh, I would love to see him do a Western horror movie or just a Western film. I think it would, his aesthetic would lend itself really great to that genre. Uh, this movie, however, after seeing the trailer, had a very low, low expectation. Not that, I mean, my, my expectation for Rob Zombie in general is fairly low. I'm fairly measured when it comes to approaching a Rob Zombie film because I know kind of the issues that he has with storytelling uh you know it, definitely usually dark subject matter very despicable type of characters but also you know maybe not the best writing maybe not the best storyteller out there but still he does what he does very well and this because this steps out of his typical vibe his typical genre his typical mood uh, I had an even lower expectation. The trailer looked horrible, but at the same time, it is a remake, a reboot of a TV show that had a very goofy, cheesy sensibility to it, where it's like you have a Frankenstein's monster type of character who's just a normal, it's like a sitcom, but with horror kind of archetypes as the characters living in a normal world uh the show had two younger people living with them i think they had a son and then their cousin their cousin was a normal person and that dynamic i think helped uh but this movie despite having a very low bar despite not thinking this was going to be good i still watched it because I'm a completist, and I've seen all of his other movies, and out of curiosity, more than anything, I decided to watch this movie. And it's also Halloween. It fits in with the month of horror movies that I want to do. Not that this is a horror movie, but it is, you know, it has horror elements to it. All the elements are based on horror film, classic horror characters, Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, Frankenstein's wife, or wife, bride of Frankenstein, I guess, um, mad scientists, all that. 
so it fit in with what I'm doing this month. And despite the low bar, despite having low expectations, I was pleasantly surprised with this movie. The trailer had no hopes, no was at no point thinking like, well, maybe. Like, I had no, no part of me was expecting this to be... I was expecting to watch this movie in order to accurately talk shit about it, right? Like, I, I hate people that talk shit about movies that they've never seen or they've only seen part of, right? Like, if I'm going to talk shit about a movie... I'm probably going to take more notes on that movie than a movie that I enjoy because I want to be detailed in my shit talking. I want to be educated on the things about the movie that I truly didn't like. And this movie, even though well, it's not a perfect movie, it's got problems, which I'll talk about the problems. But overall, I thought it was fun. I enjoyed the actors. It still has that Rob Zombie kind of weathered look. But the lighting, definitely the most colorful Rob Zombie movie. It's, it, it's got a lot of neon lights, a lot of black lights, uh, which at some point seems like too much, but it kind of fits the aesthetic. It's got like this, definitely has this like late 70s, early 80s kind of comedy vibe to it, which the first one does, as, the show did as well. Uh, it, it really feels like it, the shows that would come on as a child after Saturday morning cartoons were over, they would, the programming would turn into more children's programming, but still live action instead of animated. And there were shows like, you know, uh, Bill Nye, the science guy, but there was one show that this movie really made me remember a show that I had to look up the name because I forgot the name. But the show that this movie reminded me of in so many ways, the cheesiness of it, the lighting of it, the camera, the, the, the sets, the visuals of this, every aspect of this movie really had Beekman World vibes to it, which was an early 90s show. It's a science show, show but like kind of like a mad scientist guy had the kind of black light neon lighting aesthetic a lot of dutch angles a lot of zooming in a lot of like wacky <laughs> kind of like really like very cheesy very much geared towards kids humor that's what this movie and i i could see kids who are into that aesthetic right her into like more of a darker aesthetic, like, you know, not bright and shiny, like kids that are into horror stuff. I could see falling in love with this movie. I think this movie is going to find an audience. Even though it was, it was horribly rated on Rotten Tomatoes, not surprising. Uh, I don't even know if the fan score, I would imagine the fan score is probably not that great either, just because... Rob Zombie fans probably going into it expecting more of a Rob Zombie type movie. Fans of the Monsters probably going into it expecting, you know, it's the Monsters was a movie where the, the fans of that show are in their 40s or 50s now. So this isn't really a movie for people in their 40s or their 50s, right? This isn't a movie for me. I can I can still appreciate this movie for it being a family, clearly made for family, made for kids. Uh, I don't know how kids would, you know, but it feels like it was made for kids. It feels like it was made for kids in, of my generation. So I don't know if that holds up today. I don't know if kids today would necessarily enjoy this movie, but it definitely feels like it's made for kids. I want to take a quick break from the show to let you all know that there is official merch for the Ray Taylor Show. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com. You can get t-shirts, different artwork available, different designs, all on high quality materials in all the sizes. There's also iPhone cases made of biodegradable material. That's right. This is not bad for the environment. This is good for the environment. So all of those designs that are available on t-shirts are also available on phone cases designed by me, sold by me. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com 
to support The Ray Taylor Show and promote it out in the world so all of the people in your life can see that you are a fan of The Ray Taylor Show. Now, let's get back to that very show right now. And because the thing, I think it's a success. Now there's problems with it, you know? There's problems. This is The story is basically kind of the prequel to the TV show. This shows how um, Eddie Munster, is it Eddie Munster? Herman Munster meets Lily, his wife. So it's before them. Like you see her going out on dates. Like she has a date with uh, Boris Karloff's uh, Nosferatu character. You know, they, they live in Transylvania. It's got its all, all, whole world there in Transylvania. Very, you know, comical horror type of things where it's like a whole universe of what it's like for these horror characters to just kind of exist and have normal lives. Herman Munster is in a band and he's kind of popular. I mean, first you see him being created by the mad scientist guy and then him getting into showbiz, getting into entertainment. Um and then them falling in love. Uh, the the father is um, what's the father? Father the count is like you know doesn't like this guy. And it's you know it's a it's a kind of a, a fun little love story kind of a thing, kind of a rom com in a way. And then they end up moving to L.A. and they buy the house that everybody's afraid to buy but of course it fits in perfectly with them they move in on halloween day and they think that everybody in their town in la are monsters too because they show up on halloween there's a big halloween party and they're all wearing costumes and they're all you know so like it's very much a movie that feels like it's setting up for more which i'm totally fine with i hope this finds an audience because I think as far as a successful movie goes for Rob Zombie, I would say this is it's doing all of the things I think he was trying to do. I think he set out to make a kids movie. I think he was inspired by a lot of the kind of kids entertainment that he grew up with that I, you know, grew up with as well, like Beekman's World has that cheesy thing. I mean, if you go back and watch watch the Munster show, it is kind of a silly sitcom show it's not made to be scary it's not made to be serious uh and this movie has that kind of light sense of humor that offbeat 80s kind of vibe to it but definitely feels like a prequel because it it, which kind of of a bummer because you don't get to see the kids kids don't exist in this movie because it is a prequel they haven't had their kid yet which i believe is the kid with like the the widow's peak and uh, the cousin doesn't go to live with them. So I hope it finds an audience so we can get another movie. Because that, that's a story that I almost think would be more interesting than the story that was told. right? Seeing this family living in L.A., a place that's sunny all the time where people look normal, which is frightening to them. Uh, I think there's a lot more comedy that can be mined. I think if they could get maybe... a, a uh, add another writer to the the mix to write the the sequel make it funnier you know kind of bring out some of those i mean they had a i don't know how i think the show only went for like two or three seasons uh, i believe the show is available on peacock uh, and i tried to watch one show one of the episodes and it's like ah, i don't feel like this <laughs> i don't i'm like now that i'm older it's like i can't I can't watch that. I just watched this movie. I'm not going to watch a sitcom from the 80s or whenever the the original Munsters. Let me look that up. Um, When the original Munsters came out. But uh, it, uh, you know, the show wasn't like a serious show. So I think it fits in. I think it fits in with the um, just what the show was, you know. 1964 so maybe that's kind of the vibe it definitely has that kind of i guess it's a 60s vibe 70s vibe i don't know i don't know how many of the shows that i watched were from i just remember watching them in the 80s Uh, but they were reruns so it's not surprising so it ran 
from 1964 to 1966, two years, so probably two seasons. Yeah, two seasons of the sitcom. So not even like a long-running sitcom from the 60s. That's insane. So I think, yeah, I don't don't know. I I thought this was going to be way worse. I enjoyed it. I thought the costuming was great. The aesthetics, even though the neon and black light felt like a little bit too much, you kind of get used to it. The makeup was great. The, you know, the comedy and the humor of it definitely feels like it's for kids. You know, I, it wasn't like uproariously hilarious, but it was, you know, it was entertaining. It was entertaining. Had, it had a... Uh, it had Rocky Horror Picture Show vibes, which is kind of a similar offbeat. That obviously made geared more for adults, but it still has that kind of... It really has that kind of vibe of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Obviously, no singing in this. It's not a musical like that movie is, but still has the aesthetic, the feeling of that movie is very similar to this, I would say, in a lot of ways. Um but yeah, it's uh it's you know it definitely feels and the end is like you know, obviously spoilers or whatever. They move to LA and it's like they so they move to LA, it's a big mistake because normal people freak them out and Herman goes to get a job Right? He's like, I got to get a job so we can pay to live here. Because he sold away his home in Transylvania. Wants to get into the entertainment industry. Moved to L.A. And going to get a job. Sees all the normal people in his neighborhood. Freaking him out. And, of course, it's like, you know, the perfect sitcom neighborhood from the 60s. And... It just kind of effortlessly, like their brother-in-law who's a werewolf comes by and like one big in Vegas. So they're rich. So he doesn't have to get a job. Like it, it ends with that, which I don't know. It just, I mean, it's a kid's movie. So whatever. Let's take a little break from the show to promote. I have Inspired Disorder Plus. Would you feel good about donating $5 a month to an artist that you want to support. $5 a month is not much, less than a price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks. A lot of people would probably say, yeah, Inspired Disorder Plus, people can go, and for $5 a month or $50 for the year, you get access to all of the old podcasts that I've ever done, like 10 different podcasts, hundreds of podcast episodes. You also get access to like special deals, so if you do want to collect my artwork, you get discounts on stuff. Watch this show binge the full week ad free for five dollars a month like you get benefits for the five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year so it's not like you're just donating five dollars there's something you get something for that would you feel good about donating five dollars a month to an artist that you want to support a lot of people would probably say yeah head on over to inspiredisorder.com slash plus and become an inspired disorder plus member today and now let's get back to the show but it's like, it really felt like once they moved to L.A., that's where all the interesting stuff was going to happen. Like, seeing everything in, in Transylvania, seeing the world that Rob Zombie built of, you know, this kind of horror character world where everybody is kind of like this weird, you know, kind of fun you know everything's geared towards like horror themed you know nightclubs and street vendors and all of these things which is cool I, I i like that but it really felt like it would be interesting that fish out of the water stuff would have made it just another layer that would have made it so much more interesting which that's how this movie ends which that's why I would pr- appreciate a sequel to this because that's where the sequel to this movie I think would be levels better because you're also going to get that fish out of water stuff that you didn't get in this movie. You got a little got just got a taste of it, right? Just a very small taste at the very end of this movie where they realize that 
the, everybody else is normal in there, right? So the sequel, you would clearly, they'd probably have their kid by then. Their cousin would come to live with them. And they'd have to be integrated into that life. And that's where it would be funny. I think that's where there could be a lot more humor. But I liked it. I was surprised. I really enjoyed this movie. I really did. It's, it's crazy. I, I would say, I don't know. I didn't revisit what my top five Rob Zombie films are. But it's definitely not his worst movie. I would say this is probably mid-tier Rob Zombie. Maybe even, you know, I think his I think he's definitely more well suited for like House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects. But this might come, you know, I think this might be better than the third film of that franchise. You know, better than 31. 31 was kind of interesting as well. Um and then there was one that was like set in like seattle with like a record that one was not good but yeah i think this is like this is like solid mid-tier rob zombie and i think if they did a sequel which seems like it's set up for a sequel if they did a sequel i think it would be even better i think the sequel because they everything's set up like this movie does all the setup and then the next movie all they have to do is fish out of water funny comedic stuff maybe cast some comedians to play the normal people that interact with this family get some legit stand-up comics who can be funny some people that are good with improv whatever maybe add a few of them to the writing staff i think this that movie then the next movie in this franchise if they do another one could end up being the best rob zombie film and that's saying something I think I think I I think he I think it's surprisingly a good step for Rob Zombie. You know? Just because his aesthetic is so new, like you don't see that kind of weathered type and grizzled aesthetic brought to kids stuff. Right? Guillermo del Toro kind of has that, but not he doesn't really do kids stuff. Maybe a little bit too creepy, but also a little bit too clean. Like there is a a a dusty, dirty, weathered thing vibe look that Rob Zombie brings to his stuff that I don't think anybody else does, and uh, I don't know. I surprised by this movie. Obviously, it's not amazing. This is going to make my top ten list of the year. That's not you know, but way surprised that I enjoyed it. I had a good time watching it, and even more surprised that I'm looking forward to his sequel i think the sequel will be even better uh but anyway those are my thoughts on the monsters the new movie out now on netflix by rob zombie written and directed by rob zombie did he write are there any other writers for the monsters no just written by him so if i think dude i think if he for a sequel bring a comic in get somebody to help punch up the script brings cast some comics that would i'm sure love to work with rob zombie so many comedians you could bring in you know tom i think he's directed for tom papa bring tom papa and bill burr tons of there's tons of comedians that would work perfectly as like the normal people playing off of these characters anyway uh the monsters check it out it's if you're hesitant you might not like it but i, I was surprised by very low expectations uh but if 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 you liked beekman's world growing up if you enjoy rob zombie movies and you know that you're going in watching a family movie directed by rob zombie you might like it right like not a lot of people like Rob Zombie. It's interesting. I enjoyed it. I was surprised. Anyway, check it out. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Oh,
Bitch. Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.